What's up, family? Hey, I want to have a real heart-to-heart -heart with you guys today, okay? Man, hey, before we get started on that, I want, man, we're at that time of the year, you know, November, December. It's a real difficult time of the year for a lot of people, you know what I mean? Seasonal depression is real. Seasonal depression is real. Um, as a veteran, man, my heart goes out to veterans, you know what I mean? It's just humanity, you know what I mean? There's about 22, 23 veterans a day that commit suicide. Family, please understand that this time of the year, not just in regards to our veterans, but just nationally, you know, this time of the year, more people commit suicide this time of the year, November, Christmas time frame, you know what I mean? You know. For whatever reason, you know, this is crazy because this is a time of year that people are supposed to be thankful and grateful for all that they have and Christmas, time of giving and just all this other stuff, right? But on the flip side to that, man, it's also the time of the year that more people go into depression because they don't have their family members with them. They go into depression because they've lost a member of their family, you know what I mean? So although you know, things may be going good for you and man, you're thinking about what you're about to eat on Thanksgiving, how you about to throw down and all the Christmas stuff and whoop de whoop doop. Although you may be thinking those things, there are so many others that are thinking, man, this is the first year without my mom. Man, this is the first year without my son or my, my daughter or my husband or my wife or whatever the case may be, okay? So people are gonna be on edge during this time of the year. Be kind, be loving, be patient. You don't know who's going through what, who's battling what. And I'm speaking this as from experience, you know, I lost my wife December 4th, 2015, you know what I mean? And I battled with seasonal depression and didn't even understand it, didn't even realize that I was doing it, okay? And it took me a minute to realize, ah, Cecilia passed away December 4th. That's why, man, Thanksgiving, Christmas, because again, Thanksgiving was the last holiday that I spent with her. And right after Thanksgiving, man, she had a stroke and she just went downhill fast. You know what I mean? And so I battled with that, you know? And so I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking from somebody that's not just talking to talk. I'm talking, I'm speaking on behalf of somebody who's actually walked that walk. You know what I mean? I've lived that. I've struggled with that seasonal depression where I didn't want to be around family. I didn't want to be around anybody. And I didn't understand it until I went into a deep meditation and God was like, look, stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is why you act the way you do. This is why you get down the way you do. This is why you go into this funk and you don't even understand why you're in the funk. You don't even realize you're in the funk. <laughs> you know what I mean? He had to explain that to me. That being said, um, man, the heart of this message, man, I've shared it before, but I felt the need to get on and talk about it again, but from a deeper perspective. Um, man, if you've been with me for a minute, you know that I grew up a Christian. And one of the scriptures that I came to really appreciate um, in my growth and development was Isaiah chapter 43. You know what I mean? Stay with me. Man, we're about to go deep. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter whether you believe, <clears throat> excuse me, it doesn't matter whether you believe in Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, or any of the other stuff. You know what I mean? This is not about religion. You know, stay with me. This is not about religion in any way, shape, or form. This affects every single one of us. Every single one of us. What I'm about to read to you applies to every single person one of us Isaiah 43 verses 1 through uh, I'm gonna say 3 and I'm not even gonna read the whole thing um, chapter 1 I'm just gonna read just a portion of it do not fear for I have redeemed you I have called you by name you are mine when you pass through the waters I will be with you and through the rivers, they will not overflow you. 
when you walk through the fire you will not be scorched nor will the flame burn you man when I read that and went into a deep meditation about it I was like hold up I, I, for some reason I've always been drawn to that scripture and never really understood why and so about a year two years ago I went into a deep meditation over that scripture over that portion and I was like what is it about this what what are you trying to say to us because it's not religious what are you trying to say to us because this affects every single one of us regardless of what you believe in this affects every single one of us and so what he was showing me was like Elijah there's steps to this there's steps to spirituality there's steps to growth and development everybody ain't at the same level everybody can't do the same thing stay with me I've called you I've chosen you before time began I chose you stay with me Elijah in the beginning when it talks about when you go through the water that's like a little kid that's like a toddler you're out there playing in water ankle deep your mom standing around you your dad standing around you they're only gonna let you go so far because they're protecting you they're not gonna let you go out in the current they're not gonna let you go out in the deep water because you're not ready for it you can't handle it also water is cleansing water is purifying when you get a little grown and you mature in your growth and development oh you're gonna go through the rivers the rivers that's deep water the rivers oh man there's there's some things out there that can hurt you oh there's some rocks that you don't see oh there's some undercurrents that you can't see oh there's fish in there oh in the deep waters the rivers oh man there's some big stuff out there that if you're not careful, man, it could cause you to end your, end your life. It could take your life. The deep waters. Everybody can't go there. Everybody can't navigate through the deep waters yet. That's for those that have grown. That's for those that's put in the time. But everybody has to start out in the shallow water and after you get to a point to where you can handle the deep water oh you are gonna go through the deep water your tests of the obstacles in your life are gonna challenge you more they're gonna hurt a little more they're gonna have more bite to them they're gonna sting more because you're capable of dealing with it. So, as a little kid, as a toddler, as a little baby, your mom, your dad gives you a bath. You in shallow water. They're only gonna let so much water be in that bathtub. In that bathtub, you're safe. As you mature, man, you can take your own baths. You can put as much water in as you want to. <laughs> you know what I mean? As you mature, man, you can take a shower and clean yourself. After you go through that, then comes the fire. See, the, shower, the, the bath that cleans you so well. The shower, that'll clean you. But the fire, the fire, oh man, that's gonna purify you. That's gonna purify you. That's like fire purifying gold. And what it does is it burns away everything that's not real gold that has attached itself to the gold. 
And each and every one of us, we've had things attach itself to us throughout our life. Whether it's religious dogma, whether it's crap that we've endured from our family, whether it's crap that we've jumped into like unhealthy relationships, you know what I mean? There's crap that we put attached to ourselves. Politics, all kinds of stupid stuff. Ignorant music, you know what I mean? All kinds of stupid stuff we've attached to ourselves. And the fire is going to come and it's going to purify that. It's going to burn away all that stupid stuff, all that unhealthy stuff, all that stuff that's not real gold. You're going to go through the process. You're going to go through the process. And although you think it's to kill you, man, it ain't to kill you. It's to get rid of everything that's not helping you reach your full potential. It's to get rid of everything that's not or that's keeping you from being the greatest version of yourself. But in our ignorance, we think, man, this is gonna kill me and this is, man, you know what I mean? But it's not that, it's not that at all. You gotta go through the fire. Like the Phoenix, you have to go through the fire. And so when I sit back and I look at that scripture and I, and I think about those three different sections, man, because it talks about you when you go through the water, you'll be all right. But then talk, it goes on again. When you go through the river, it's letting you know, man, this is different. This is another level. But when you go through the fire, man, that's, that's another level. You know what I mean? That's another level. And so we have to understand, man, that there's levels to this. There's levels to our growth and development. There's levels to spirituality. There's levels to walking in your purpose. You have to know who you are. Everybody knows that I, everybody that knows me know I'm a, I'm a Laker fan. I love basketball. I can't play it, but I, I love watching it. You know what I mean? And I, honestly, I haven't even watched any games this year. Um, but I'm a Laker fan. And I'm a big fan of Carmelo Anthony. Stay with me. I've liked Carmelo Anthony before he even got in the NBA. I followed him when he was at Syracuse. And he led their team to the national championship. I watched him be drafted. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a fan of Carmelo Anthony. Stay with me. He came into the league 19 years ago. If memory serves me correctly. 19 years ago. He's the second oldest player in the NBA. About three years ago, about four years ago, no team in the NBA wanted him. All the experts, all the GMs, general managers, owners of the teams, the powers to be, all the sports analysts, these quote unquote experts, Everybody said Carmelo Anthony was washed up. He was done. He was done. That's what the experts said. That's what the powers to be said. But Carmelo Anthony never believed the powers to be. He didn't believe the experts because he knew who he was. He knew what he brought to the table. He played a couple of years at Portland. Portland took a chance. He played a couple of years there. He came to the Lakers this year. Everybody in the league, every GM now, wish they had Carmelo Anthony on their team. There's not one team in the NBA that could not use 
his services. There's not one team in the NBA that would not be drastically better than what they are right now if they didn't have him on their team or if they had him on this team. He's that good. He's a sniper behind the three-point line. What I mean by that? Man, he's like shooting 60-something percent. Is it sustainable? I don't know. It's not the point. The point is, he never gave up. The point is, he always knew who he was. And regardless of what the experts said about him, regardless of what the powers to be said about him, he didn't believe that hype. He didn't believe that madness. He didn't believe all that yak yak that was being spewed about him. All the drama, all the chaos, all the negativity that they were spewing about him. He never believed it. He never accepted that. He accepted the fact that that was their opinion. And I tell you all the time, everybody's entitled to their opinion. You ain't got to believe it. You ain't got to accept it. Accept that they're entitled to the opinion, but don't, don't accept it as a fact. Don't accept it as that's who you are. Don't embrace that. But that's what the great majority of us do. Because we don't understand who we are. Carmelo went through his fire. He went through his water. He went through his growth and development. And now he's shining. You're going to go through the water. You're going to go through the fire. And it's not to kill you. It's to clean you up. And it's to purify you. Because there's an interesting thing. Water. Can only clean so much. What the water can't clean, the fire will burn away. I'm going to say that again. Water can only clean so much. And what the water can't clean, the fire will burn away. My hope and prayer is that you understand the process of growth and development that you understand the process of spirituality that you understand where you're at in your process of growth and development because it's not based on years it's based on you doing the work And how genuine you've been and diligent you've been in your work. There's a lot of people that go to work. They have jobs. They go to work. I work at FedEx. A lot of people show up. A lot of people show up to work and they only put out 15%, 20%. 50% of what they're capable of doing. Very few people give 100% every day. And the same thing is true in our spiritual walk. Same thing is true in our growth and development. You could be in growth and development for 20 years and only have put in 10% of what you're capable of doing. This is not to put anybody down or anything of that nature. We're just having a conversation. You get out what you put in. You reap what you sow. My hope and prayer is that you don't give up. That you understand that the water is not 
intended to drown you that the things within the water that you can't see the boulders the large fish the snakes and all those other different things they're not meant to destroy you the fire isn't meant to destroy you all of that is meant to help you and help you it will if you allow it to I love you guys happy healing peace